Hello, baby. Oh, this um, isolation thing's really starting to uh, get to me. Um, sorry about that little ding ding noise. That's going to pop up a few times. I've got people messaging me songs for music videos, so it's going to be a bit of a pain in the background. So here we go. We've gone through and looked at the interface of Avid. Now it's time to actually dive into some practical tips and tricks, I guess, uh, in terms of getting best results uh, for your projects moving forward. And one way of doing that is by color coding your timeline and your clips, especially if you're doing something like this where you've got like uh, testimonials and people talking to camera and stuff like that. Um, now, if we look along the timeline here, you'll be able to see that I've got uh, three video tracks. So I've got my interviews on the bottom track. I've got some video overlays sitting over the top of that. Actually, no, I don't. I've got lower thirds sitting over the top of that and video overlays sitting on top of that. So we've got a few different shots and a few different things sort of working in there. Okay, so what does this all mean? Why do we have all these different audio tracks running down the bottom here instead of having the audio running through one track? Because if we look at it more carefully, you can see that they're evenly spread out. So, you know, this audio finishes and then this audio starts down here. So why, oh why, oh why will we spread them out over, the t over different audio tracks? The simple reason, because they're different people talking and in nearly every single frame, they're different environments where they're talking. So if I was to have all my audio on one track within an interview, and as you can see right down the bottom, I've got a music track running right at the very bottom, but that music track can sit all the way across the bottom because it's just a singular music track. But why oh why do I have my audio for my interviews spread out like this? Instead of just having them on audio track one and two, I've got them running right down to track 12. And then on top of that, I've also got audio tracks 14 and 15 for music. Well, the simple answer is um, they each, each track has its own audio compression and equalization settings, which means that I don't have to do it individually for each audio clip. I just have to do it once for each of the audio tracks. And then that way, they're gonna play nice and smoothly across. So if I expand my audio track controls, you'll see that each of the tracks has an equalizer and a dynamic compressor sitting within that track. So I set it once, and then I don't have to set it again throughout the track. So that's one of the reasons why we spread all our audio out like that, okay? The next thing is, it can start to get a bit confusing because you're sort of sitting here going, well, you know, like, uh, I don't know which track's which, like, I don't know where this person might be talking. I might want to find all the sections where this person's talking because I might want to sort of slightly adjust the frame. And so therefore I've got to go through and find all the bits where she's talking. And as you can see, if I click on this spot here, she's talking there. And if I click on this spot over here, she's not talking there, that's video overlay. But if she, there you go, she's talking right there. Okay, so I know that she's on these tracks here. Okay, but that's not enough for me. I wanna make sure it's really easy for me to navigate and find which tracks I'm trying to work with in terms of who I'm interviewing. And this is also helpful because you might sort of start cutting something together and you might start thinking, you know what, in terms of pacing and rhythm, it's kind of weird because we keep cutting back to this one person and they're overrunning the show. They're, they're sort of, they're too much in the frame. Um, what you can do there, what I'm about to show you, is you'll be able to see how often they are in frame. So it, it, you can sort of change it, I guess, and adjust it. So how do we get down to this, okay? If you look across here, you might notice I've got some very pretty colors running up beside these uh, thumbnails here of the interviews that we've got. And as you can see, like, you know, um, this guy here, he's all got the purple color. This lady here's got a nice aqua color. This lady here has got a green color. She's awesome, she's amazing. She was a great interviewer. This guy here has got a yellow color. Uh, these two have got white, and this final lady has got two pink colors, okay? So I've already color coded them in the bin there, so it's easy for me to navigate inside the bin. So now I need to do them to my timeline, okay? So the first one I'm gonna do is I'm gonna find out who's on track one, and of course, it's my favorite. So I've put her on track one. Okay, so what I'm gonna do now is I've selected the two tracks that she's connected to, okay? Now I'm gonna go down to this tab here called a hamburger menu, and I'm gonna go up to track color, okay? Now before I select my track, let's look at her color. Her colors are light green. So I want my track color to be similar to that. Um, 
Yeah, that'll do. Or I could pick a like a specific color. Let's just see. Light green. There you go. That looks like it's matching. So I'll click OK there. Now all her tracks are that light green color, like her thumbnail there. Okay. Now the next one down, very formal looking person, and she's in the hot pink. Okay. So now I'm going to deselect these two tracks. I'm going to select the next two tracks and I'm going to go to track color again. And this time I'm going to select hot pink. Um, once again, there's no hot pink color there. So I'm going to click on this tab here and I'll find something that's very similar. There we go. That looks pretty similar. I'll select that one. And voila, now she's got hot pink. Um, likewise, I'll do it to the next track. So I'm just doing it all the way down. Um, and the reason why I'm going to do it all the way down is because then it looks pretty as well. So I'm just going to go track color and this one here, I can go easy purple. There we go. Those two colors are clashing a bit. They're not that, yeah, that, that sort of can be a bit confusing. Let's just keep looking. Okay. The next one we've got is, oh, she was pretty good too. Very, very, um, clear and direct with what she was talking about. Okay. She is the aqua color. So there we go, we'll go the aqua color there. Oh, damn it, I didn't select both tracks. Aqua color again. There we go. And then the next one down here is the old bloke and he's yellow. So let's make him yellow. I'll just go down here, track color, and we'll make him yellow. There we go. Now he's yellow. Now the last two, they're white. Um, yeah, I may as well change them while I'm at it. Just then that way I can keep working, I guess, after I've done this tutorial, but there we go. Okay, now, my timeline looks beautiful with all the different colors of the rainbow. Um, let's just change my video color while I'm at it because I, I like to take risks and I like to challenge myself. So let's make that, uh, that nice purple color. And let's make this one. Um, what color should I make this one? Blue, there we go, blue. Ah, look at that, now it's all looking marvelous, nice and brightly colored. So, I know I'm being silly about this, but this is actually a really efficient way of working. Now, I talked you through it, and honestly, it didn't take me too long to do that, to go through and change the trick, the clip colors, the track colors, sorry, and, and, and adjust them each, okay? It wasn't that long. Likewise, up in here, if I wanna change the color of these boxes here, the way that I do that is this, okay? I'm gonna expand this bin out here, and I'm gonna to go to brief view. And now I can click on that color, right click and choose another color. So I might go red like that. I'm just gonna select all the purples and take them over to red. Now he is defined by the red color, okay? So before where that color was clashing with the other color above it, where the pink color was clashing with the other color above it, I'm going to now change those two tracks to red instead. So let's go track color and red. And voila, now it's all matching up nice and neatly there. So now I've shown you how to, oh, just seeing two geckos having a fight on my window. They're going to get into my electrical cords. Uh, oh no, there's a spider there. Hopefully the spider will eat them. <laughs> no, they just ate the spider. Oh, that's a sad, sad day for the spiders of the world. Okay, so sorry I digress, let's get back into it. So there we go, we've got um, our tracks all color coded and they're nice and neatly matched, okay? So even if I'm in brief view, I'm still gonna see those colors. So I'm gonna get a pretty good idea of, okay, I need to find another section of her. Instead of going through and scrolling through a sequence of colors, I can immediately go, yep, that's her interview right there. So if I double tap that, there she is in her interviews sitting right there. Okay, so that is all the reasons why I changed the colors of my timeline. I hope that's helped you. Um, yeah, it's a pretty simple one, this one. So I'll be seeing you next tutorial.